Okay, so this video is about American American culture and how K-pop aligns with it. But I want to say, first and foremost, I am so happy the Hyman Meehan drama is over. I'm so happy. Well, I don't know if it's over, but she stepped down as CEO of Adore. So, like, are they done? Like, are they done arguing? Because they have been going about this for weeks. Do you know how long that is in K-pop? Weeks. And it wasn't even new developments. or It's, it's not like with 50-50 and that whole case when it was like, it was like beef with the CEO and then like the members, apparently the members tried to betray the CEO, but then it was actually the producers. And then it turned out to be the members' parents who got greedy. And then they like did the thing with the producers, but then it was like the CEO. And then everybody was like, why is the CEO getting mad at the kids? And then it was just like all this mess. Like every other week, it was a new layer to the mess. This isn't that. Min Hee Jin, the Mi Hin Jin versus Hive situation has just been sort of like maybe maybe occasionally an extra detail but it's just been like a back and forth about the same thing for like weeks and it's just like like why like what is the reason like i get it it's hive but like and i don't know why she would do this anyways because it's not like she it's, it's like anywhere down anywhere from this would be a step down for me he, he, min he Jin, technically because who, who, where was she before? SM Entertainment. Hive acquired SM. Well, a lot, most of SM, got a good chunk of SM shares. Um, that was originally going to be sold to Adore in the first place. But, I think what didn't, but like, whatever, business stuff. But it doesn't matter because now that company is connected to Hive. So like, she's technically at the top already. So what are they fighting for? I'm so glad she stepped down because like none of it made sense. Like none of this made sense at all. Like I get it. I get it. They debuted New Jean's little sister and the company didn't want to own up to that. Because that's this that's what they did. They debuted New Jean's little sister. She was right about that. Was it a, was a strict copy? No, because Illit has Illit has I don't know, I haven't really gotten deep into their music, but from the couple of singles that I've seen they're more comfortable um going to a different vibe a more a more distinctly different vibe with closer comebacks so that's one thing i noticed from them while new jeans sort of has a space where they perform in and try out different ideas that seems to be how their concept works and even if they didn't invent the y2k concept because like obviously they did start the y2k concept for the end of the fourth into the fifth generation and, I, and even though most people think that the fifth generation hasn't started, including me, um, I think that the shift in K-pop has sort of presented itself as that. And new genes, this whole, the whole hive new genes thing, that was a marker for a shift in the industry. And it wasn't done by the big three. Or if you want to say big four now, but like it wasn't done by the big three. It was done by hive. And I think that's the start of a new era that sort of cut off the natural trajectory of the generations we've knew, we've known before. Because each generation, even if people say that Gen 3 started in 2012, which you can't argue, but most people call it Gen 2.5 for a reason. All the Gen 2 acts were still in charge. SNSD had their second peak in 2013. They were going to have a third one if Jessica didn't kicked out, get kicked out of the group. They were going to have another Japanese album. Yeah, SM thought we forgot about that, but no, because we were waiting on that. And I'm not talking about the best album. Yeah, I'm petty. I'm petty, because I wanted another Japanese album. Anyways. Um, yeah, and, and, it, and it delayed Yuri's comeback. I remember that, too. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm just being childish right now. But um, the natural, like, markers of new generations and of new trends is when the big three drop their new girl groups and set the standard for the new generation. In 2015, what happened? Twice debuted. And the year before that, Red Velvet debuted. And then the year after, and then in 2016, because twice debuted at the end of 2015. Red Velvet debuted at the end of 2014, but that was also during like the whole like Jessica thing. So nobody really cared. Um, and then like they added Yuri and then it was like Scandal. And Red Velvet's concepts were often, were not, they, people, the public didn't really catch on to them at first. Um, 
like dumb dumb era was when people started to really like red velvet but the ice cream cake era wasn't necessarily appreciated um especially automatic um however 2016 is when all of the gen 3 big like the gen 3 leaders got into their stride twice had cheer up and the god tier tt which by the way if they want to make a mature version of tt they can make a mature version of going crazy now that song that song is a song that age up like oh my god i was listening to that the other night i'm just like anyways but and then red velvet finally got their first win with russian roulette so that was like the 2015 era was technically really the start of true third generation because before that like the girl group battle of 2015 iconic but that was all gen 2.5 gen 2 and gen 2.5 groups the pure gen 3 groups didn't really hit their stride until 2016 and um they held their dominance for the most part for about three years total um which is which is already shorter than the previous generation however we're talking about flat across the board dominance to where they won everything to where they were number one at the end of the year awards on everything um but they were still dominant sales wise and influence for years until like eyes won and like espa's debut but even when eyes won and espa debuted i mean like itsy debuted in 2019 right so it makes it seem like gen 3 like if we're going by what i just said gen 3 was only like four years but it really like if we're gonna like if you count gen 2.5 gen 3 was about seven years it was a typical seven year time span um but gen 4 like espa had their like hit but for gen 4 it seems like a lot of the groups that were like in charge were the groups from the projects from the previous generation and then the new groups from the big three they were either initially in charge or they were still getting their stride so espa made their mark and um submitted themselves with next level however people felt very um people felt like they were very hit or miss with their singles afterwards and like they were still waiting for their g or for their cheer up like every like people have were waiting for that one song that single-handedly owns the generation and for twice that was like it's cheer up culturally but numbers wise it was tt like in third gen nothing was performing better than that song that's why they're sick of it because they had a because they had to perform it so much because that song dominated everything and it's a hit that sticks like grits and it does not get like dry at all anyways um I don't know what the and like it seems like the fourth honestly the fourth generation was all about one young and that's something that we don't really give her credit for because even though we had yuna who created the korean beauty standards like every single one of your faves are compared to her that is like literally the blueprint she didn't make the blueprint she is the blueprint um and you had suzy the nation's first love who yeah and um and then in gen three you had jenny i mean you have jenny and then irene but none of them have had the dominance over in it over a generation like one young did she was the most relevant person for four years and has carried two groups since she was 14. yeah um i don't know why i keep doing that i keep forgetting because i'm not used to having something in my face i keep forgetting that if i swing this it won't just like move out of the way like it's tied if i swing it to move out of my face it's just gonna go back right there it's not hair anyways uh, <laughs> um yeah okay this video is like nine minutes and 34 seconds but yeah and so like we need to give one young her credit because she she carried she carried like everything from like her eyes one days up until i would say about maybe like last year two years ago maybe like last year because 
even if her group singles weren't the most highest charting, even though they did very well, um, she her group had, was the most consistent group to come out of the Gen 4 lineup. People were wishy-washy on Espa at the beginning, and of course in general SM fashion, Espa debuted after Irene's Candle. So that, so that got overshadowed by that. Um, but when it came to I've, oh yeah, hold on, sorry. And um, when it came to Itzy, they debuted strong. They set the tone for the fourth generation. So that was in 2019. That was at the end of 2019. Um, however, actually, you know, I'm just gonna put this in part two. I'm just gonna make this part two because it's like 10 minutes and 42 seconds. And my watch time has gone up, so I'm not gonna mess that up. 